Kazan, Russia, after 88 years of soccer players, coaches and fans crying foul. There is finally a second chance for a referee to confirm whether a penalty is indeed a penalty at the World Cup. It did not take long for that rule change to play a major role in Russia. France's first goal in its 2-1 victory over Australia on Saturday, the third day of competition here, was a direct result of input from the video assistant referee system known as VAR. The VAR system, which has had extensive testing by World Cup referees in training but, to its critics, far too little in live matches, is being used for the first time in a World Cup. And though the thousands of Australian fans who made the long track to Kazan voiced their displeasure with the decision it produced early in the second half on Saturday, the new technology appeared, by most measures, to have worked as designed. In the 54th minute, France's star forward Antoine Griezmann went down in the penalty area after what looked like contact with the Australian defender Joshua Riston, who had appeared to clip Griezmann's left heel while sliding in from behind for a tackle just as Griezmann crossed into Australia's penalty area. Kyle Mbappé, Griezmann's 19-year-old teammate, pointed with both hands at the penalty spot, urging the Uruguayan referee, Andrea Cunha, to award a foul but Cunha waved away the French appeals as play raced back upfield. Left behind, Griezmann lay on the grass in the sunshine, there was barely a cloud overhead, wearing the aggrieved look so many fallen strikers have worn through the decades in the game's most prestigious competition. Continue reading the main story. But this is a new era in a sport so long resistant to change, and at the next stoppage of play, Cunha who had been alerted to a possible error via an earpiece linked to a video assistant tracking the match in Moscow, paused the match for a review. Jogging to the sideline, he peered into a video monitor to watch a replay of his decision on the Griezmann incident. Moments later, he returned to the field, blew his whistle and, to the Australian's dismay this time, awarded a penalty kick. Griezmann coolly converted it with a curling left-footed shot, giving the French a 1-0 lead in the 58th minute. The repercussions of the World Cup's first VAR decision had been immediate. The whole review, from whistle to second look to whistle, took less than two minutes, but that the new system appeared to work as designed does not mean it will put an end to post-match debates. Australia coach Bert Van Marwijk was adamant that a penalty should not have been awarded. Several of his players also expressed skepticism. Personally. I don't think I'm a fan of it, to be honest, Matthew Ryan, the Australian goalkeeper, said of VARS. As players, if we make a mistake on the pitch, we don't get to stop the play and rewind it to correct it or what not. The officials do now, and obviously it was brought in to avoid calamitous errors and those sorts of things, and obviously there's a bit of a grey area to what the referee decides and on it being conclusive. Now I've got to question what the definition of conclusive is. Because I don't think the penalty decision was conclusive enough to overturn. France's coach, Didier Deschamps, was understandably more sanguine. I am not going to complain with the use of video today because it was in our favor, obviously, he said. In our friendlies, we've already had situations when it was not in our favor. This is the way it is. We've been warned that in some situations, VAR can be used. Whatever the grey areas, France's lead did not last long. Less than four minutes later, Samuel Umtiti, its sturdy central defender, inadvertently touched an Australian cross with his extended right hand. After a slight delay, just long enough for observers to wonder if Cunhook had heard from Moscow about the handball, which was clear but difficult to discern as it barely affected the ball's trajectory, he awarded another penalty. This time, he did not bother to make a trip to the sideline. Under FIFA's rules, the on-field referee has the final word on all VAR reviews, but also has the option of simply accepting the word of the VAR official, who has immediate access to television replays. It was unclear, however, if that happened in this case. The Australia captain, Miles Jedinak, who was impossible to miss on the field with his long salt and pepper beard, did not waste the opportunity converting the penalty with a fast rolling shot as goalkeeper Hugo Lawrence timed to his right. 
The 3 minutes 7 second gap between the goals was the shortest period between two penalties scored by opposing teams in a World Cup match. The score then remained tied as the game moved deep into the second half. Few would have thought that would be the case, since France has a lineup brimming with young stars and is considered in one of the favorites in Russia. Meanwhile, Australia, whose players generally earn their livings in less floodlit leagues, was widely considered a soft opening opponent. But after allowing three dangerous shots on goal in the first six minutes of the game, Australia tightened its back line and slowed the pace. You look at the strike force they possess and with nearly all of their players playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world and at the highest level, and our defense really limited their opportunities to pretty much nothing, Ryan said. But individual quality ultimately made the difference. Paul Pogba, the Manchester United midfielder, created the winning goal in the 81st minute, slashing through the heart of the Australian defense with two deft passing combinations, the first with Mbappe the second with Olivier Giroud, a second-half substitute. Controlling the final pass from Giroud, Pogba flicked a right-footed shot that deflected off defender Aziz Bahak, soared over the London Ryan and ricocheted off the bottom of the crossbar and down toward the goal line. This time, the technology that applied was not new. Goal line technology was introduced at the last World Cup, in Brazil, in 2014, and it notified Kunha threw a watch on his wrist, that the ball had completely crossed the line. It was a reaffirming moment for Pogba, who has struggled to live up to his then world record transfer fee at Manchester United, and whose starting spot with France was still in question until a strong performance in its final friendly match, a 1-1 draw with the United States last week in Lyon. The criticisms are always there, Pogba said. When I played when I was a boy, my buddies and I used to tease each other, you were bad. You're good. You're not. We never really paid attention to this. It was always the game and what happened on the field that spoke the loudest. So now it's a bit like those days for me. Today, the most important thing is the result, and if I can help the team, I'm very proud. Even so, it was not a reassuring day for France, even with three points and the early edge in Group C. The starting lineup Deschamps used Saturday had an average age of 24 years 6 months. The only starter who was not born in the 1990s was the goalkeeper, Loris, who is 31. It's not youth that caused it, Deschamps said of his team's stuttering attack. If you don't count today, in the last four World Cups, only once has France won its opening match. I'm not going to say Australia is a European power, but it's not what some people think that they don't possess quality. Look at Uruguay against Egypt. Except for Russia, which had an easy first match, it's complicated. It's the World Cup. But we need to do better. We are capable of doing better, and we should do better. The next chance comes against Peru on June 21st in Yekaterinburg. And it will be intriguing to see if Deschamps chooses to stay with the youngest lineup France has used in a World Cup opener since 1930 the year the World Cup began. So much has changed since then, as Kunha made abundantly clear on Saturday. Even with the video, there will be interpretations, Deschamps said. There will be some who will agree, some who will not. It's the referee who decides. Broken bar here's how it happened. Full time, France 2, Australia 1. A good fight, but France had just enough quality and just enough lucky bounces, to prevail. They'll be pleased. Australia will have lots to feel good about, everything, that is, except the score line. 90 plus 1 5 more minutes. 5 minutes of added time for Australia to try to pull a rabbit out of its hat. 90 I'll have whatever Kent is having. 90 minutes and, and he's fresh as a daisy, spinning away from two Australians on the sideline, then dribbling around a third. The motor on him must be one of the world's great renewable energy sources. 85 Tech is also winning today. Like it or not, this game may be an advertisement for VAR and goal line technology, two innovations added, amid much furor, to help officials in the last two World Cup cycles. VAR confirmed the first penalty, seemed to be behind the delayed call that awarded the second, 
and goal line technology just gave Pogba the third. The goal of each innovation was to get called right, and in each case today, that appears to be what happened. 81 goal for France. Pogba. He works a neat give and go with Giroud at the top of the box, and send a shot off a defender's foot and the crossbar behind a wrong-footed Ryan. This time it's goal line technology that comes into play. The referee's watch buzzes, the whistle blows, and Pogba's hands go from out wide, wow, to appraised. France leads again, by 2-1. Let's see if they take better care of the edge this time. 76 yellow for Tolisso. Tolisso cynically breaks up an Australian counter with a shot to Jurek's ankle. That's a professional foul, professionally done. 70 Giroud Fecker for Griezmann and Dumbell. A change up front for Deschamps, and good news for me, too, as I lose to accents with 20 minutes to go. 1. Um Titi, figuring what the heck after his blunder, unleashes a shot from 30 yards directly into an Australian backside. The ricochet makes it almost to midfield. 67 danger at the back. A loose ball in Australia's end puts Ryan under pressure from a racing bap, but he wins the short sprint and clears. He'll be asking for a little more care next time, thank you very much. 64 first sub, Jurek for Nam Bout. Australia is the first to go to the bench. Jurek is a regular for Australia, and while Nam Bout worked hard, it's hard to remember his best moment. 62 Jedinok, goal. Australia. Cool as a cucumber, Australia's captain rolls the ball behind the diving Loris and it's 1-1. Simplest finish by a man with a six-inch beard in this year's World Cup. What could Um Titi have been thinking there? He jumped for a ball well over his head and left his fist up long enough to touch it. Stunning bit of brain lock, but no Australian on earth is complaining. 61 another penalty, for Australia this time. Um Titi has handled the ball while jumping for a free kick he was never going to reach. What a mistake. 59 blood in the water. Revived by the goal, France surges forward again. But the flood the attack and it peters out in a weak shot but they definitely feel like they were owed that lead, and now they have it. 58 goal. France. No doubt from Griezmann, who takes one step and buries the penalty in the right side netting past a flat-footed Ryan. 56 upon further review, penalty. VAR did its job there. Wrist and clearly clipped Griezmann's trailing heel on the slide tackle, and that's what brought him down. He gets a yellow, and Griezmann steps to the spot. 54 penalty? No penalty. Pogba finally arrives, threading a gorgeous through ball into the path of Griezmann down the left. It looks like he was sized down by wristing, but the referee waves away the penalty shout. But wait, he's gone to look after the next whistle. Big test for VAR. 51 Dimbel drives in. Dimbel cuts in from the right and find a man on the left. But his pass, like so many French ones today, lacks just enough quality to perform its intended task. 48 Hernandez down in a heap. He's holding his fans and patting the turf, but the blow seemed only a glancing one, and the referee seems pretty confident in his opinion that the challenge that dropped him was a nothing burger. 46 back at it. No changes for either team to start the second half. Keep an eye on Pogba for the first 15 minutes or so. He'll need to be better, and more involved, than he was in the first half. Half time, all square. Australia will be happy with how that went, France not so much. Oddly, the best chance of the half went to the Soxeroos but one gets the sense that France has the talent to sort this out and pry open the defense as Australia tires in the second half. They just can't expect to walk the ball into the net the way Australia is standing shoulder to shoulder in the center. Worst case, Deschamps can just throw on Olivier Giroud, lob some balls in the box, and see what he can do. For some reason, he always seems to get his head on one or two. Van Marwijk, for one would just prefer to see more of the same. Not always the best players win prizes, he said Friday. A lot of times, it's the best team. We would like to be the best team. Chris Clary, I feel like I'm in Australia.
The French fans, who are surely a shorter flight away, are getting outzouted by a lot. But the French midfield is not exactly making us forget Platini and Zidane, either. The front three of Griezmann, Bap and Dembele looks fluid and dangerous, however. Given a chance, they can make something happen very quickly. 44 tied defense, tied game. Australia has settled into a very narrow set of two lines of four, and they're breaking up any attempt to go through, or over, their back line. France would do well to stretch the field, both now and in the second half. Wit favors them, and it might just crack open the Soxaroo's bank vault of a defense. 41 Frustration from France France clearly believes it should be ahead by now, and that's probably true. But Deschamps keeps waving his arms over calls, Bap's done a bit of grumbling to the referee and Australia just keeps running around breaking things up. Still scoreless. 31 Griezmann gets behind. Griezmann latches onto a looping feed in the area with his toe, but Australia scrambles back to cover. 26 Sweet spin by Mbapp. He turns through two defenders but lets the ball get away but definitely looked like a hundred million dollar player there. 23 no harm, no foul on Dembel. Dembel takes a tumble cutting from the left, and both he and Deschamps find it incredible that there was no foul there. Australia has definitely found its footing a little after that last scoring chance, but they're definitely as physical as you'd think a plausibly overmatched, Bert Van Marwijk coached team would be. 17 Australia goes close. Against all momentum, it's Australia that nearly scores first, a cross, a header, a stray French foot. But Lawrence dives to his left to parry it away in front of Sainsburg, who was there to pounce on any mistake. That would have really been something. 13 Australia's lackey gets a yellow. Moose wings in a hard diving cross, but France clears. And back we go. Lecky is a step late on Lucas, and he picks up the game's first yellow and sets up another France free kick. It's cleared, but only for a corner. 11 Australia settled a little. Australia gets a small stretch of possession, soothing Aussie nerves a bit, but every loose touch leads to a turnover, and to France charging back at them again. Now they've won a free kick out on the left, and it's France who will have to defend it. 6 Griezmann now. Another chance for France, as Griezmann gets a look up high. But Ryan is there again. Two minutes later he gets a header on a free kick. Ryan is there to catch it on the bounce. Sensing the theme yet? 5 Pogba's first chance. A foul on Bab sets up a Pogba free kick from 25 yards or so out top. His shot clears the wall, but hits Ryan right in the mitt. 3 Danger from Bab. Australia's first scare comes in the form of Mbapp breaking down the right and firing a shot from a tight angle that Ryan does well to push around the post. The Soxaroos will want to limit looks like that. Kickoff in Kazan. Here we go. Australia in head to toe yellow, France in blue tops with white shorts. Enjoy. Bold move from Deschamps. More from Chris and Kazan. Bold move from Didier Deschamps to embrace the youth movement to this degree. Among those on the bench for France's first World Cup game are Olivier Giroud, 31, who is the current team's leading scorer and tied with Zinedine Zidane for fourth on France's all-time list with 31 goals. Blaise Matuidi, 31, one of their key figures in midfield in the 2014 World Cup and 2016 Euros. Benjamin Mendy, 23. The Manchester City wing back widely considered and one of the best in the world at his position. 13 Australia's lucky gets a yellow. Moose wings in a hard diving cross, but France clears. And back we go. Lecky is a stamp plate on Lucas, and he picks up the game's first yellow. And sets up another France free kick. It's cleared, but only for a corner. 11 Australia settled a little. Australia gets a small stretch of possession, soothing Aussie nerves a bit, but every loose touch leads to a turnover, into France charging back at them again. Now they've won a free kick out on the left, and it's France who will have to defend it. 6 Griezmann now. Another chance for France, as Griezmann gets a look up high, 
but Ryan is there again. Two minutes later he gets a header on a free kick. Ryan is there to catch it on the bounce. Sensing the theme yet? Five Pogba's first chance. A foul on Bab sets up a Pogba free kick from 25 yards or so out top. His shot clears the wall, but hits Ryan right in the mitts. Three danger from Bab. Australia's first scare comes in the form of Mbappe breaking down the right and firing a shot from a tight angle that Ryan does well to push around the post. The Soxeroos will want to limit looks like that. Kickoff in Kazan. Here we go. Australia in head to toe yellow, France in blue tops with white shorts. Enjoy. Bold move from Deschamps. More from Chris and Kazan. Bold move from Didier Deschamps to embrace the youth movement to this degree. Among those on the bench for France's first World Cup game are Olivier Giroud, 31, who is the current team's leading scorer and tied with Zinedine Zidane for fourth on France's all-time list with 31 goals. Blaise Matuidi, 31, one of their key figures in midfield in the 2014 World Cup and 2016 Euros. Benjamin Mendy, 23. The Manchester City wing back widely considered and one of the best in the world at his position. A full day ahead. France-Australia is the first of four games today. The matches kick off three hours apart, so make sure you hydrate and eat between in the brief windows between them, because you'll probably want to at least sample them all. Rory Smith of the Times is at the next one, Argentina Iceland in Moscow, 9 a.m. ET. Then Tariq Panja will check in from Peru Denmark in Saransk, noon, ET. The nightcap could be the best of the bunch, Nigeria Croatia in Kaliningrad, 3 p.m. ET. Chris Clary, big turnout here in Kazan from the Afi fans, most of whom have come a long way. A small sea of green and gold fills up several blocks of seats in the lower tier of this charming stadium. Mbapp starts at age 19. Kylie and Mbapp by the way, becomes the youngest player to represent France at the World Cup, at 19 years and 178 days. He's a long way from Bondi. From Chris Clary and Kazan, the French team that will start against Australia, at an average of 24 years 6 months, is, according to the French newspaper Le Quipe, the youngest French team to start a World Cup since the 1930 edition, which was the first.